I hate to break this to you, but nobody reads everything you write. We have to get over that. And really, nobody reads everything you write when you do it in bullet point form. Are there things we can do? Sure. Can we um, you know, reduce the letting a little bit? Can we increase the space after? Sure. You know, that helps. That makes us a little bit better. Can we really buckle down and do that thing that nobody ever does in presentation, which is edit? Uh, yeah, sure. We can get copy down, and that helps. This is better than what we just saw. But as long as it remains in bullet point form, our minds, our audience's minds go into this sort of, uh, this just sort of mode of turning off and just getting confused and seeing a big block. So if we're going to have bullet points, we've got to put them on the slide in a different way. It doesn't necessarily mean we have to use less words, although that's always a good thing, but we have to put them on in a different way. This is the big technique. Whenever I see a list of bullet points like this, a vertical list of bullet points, this is what I'm thinking in my head. I need to chunk these out. What is chunking? It's taking every bullet point and not going horizontal, um, sorry, yeah, not going vertically on the page, but going horizontally across. Because every time the eye has to do this visual carriage return, down, 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 they start to zone out. And they get lost. But horizontally, the eye reads it in sort of one motion. They're sort of like quickly going down, but then they're visually going across. Here's another very simple slide, one, two, three, but any time you see vertical information, move it horizontally if you can. And the cool thing about this is, you don't need a graphic design degree for this. You don't need Photoshop. You don't need any, even, do I have, I have some beginning PowerPoint people here? You could create this in about a minute, right? I mean, there's nothing to this. Now this is a technique like, it's like a cooking technique. Once you learn it, you can start riffing on it and improvising and, and changing into other things. So this is a case where, you know, we've got like nine or 10 bullet points. Well, we can't do nine columns. It's, that's just gonna be way too thin. That's not gonna work. But you could turn it into a grid. That's chunking in a different way. I would say even this slide is better cognitively than a vertical list of bullet points. But again, this is a technique you can add on to, you can take farther, you can riff on, you can do different things with, you can add imagery to it. You can put your text over your imagery, still chunking. You don't like imagery? Great. You can use iconography, still chunking. The, the principle is there of just doing your four things. So, can you do this just manually and just, you know, make your own little text boxes? Sure. Or you can let PowerPoint help you out in a couple of different ways. The first one is, don't get scared, it involves smart art. I hate smart art just like you do, but somebody once said, don't think of it as smart art, think of it as smart start. So, if you take your, your, uh, your text box here and you right click, and I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a PC, as I said, I'm a Mac guy, um, and I'll try to point out the Mac differences. If you go to convert to smart art, which is right here, you can also right click to do it, lots of ways to do it, and you start rolling over your smart art little options here, Guess what? Smart Art knows about chunking. That's kind of what this is. Now you can pick anything here, but I usually end up, am I echoing? Um, you usually end up, I usually end up with hierarchy list um, if I don't have sub bullets because it just creates nice rounded rectangles. The one right next to it creates um, heart sharp corners. You click this, you get Smart Art, right? But don't stay there because what you can do is you can ungroup Smart Art. And you can right click, it's just literally ungroup. Right click, ungroup. And now smart art goes away. And now you have boxes that you can design. Um, it's all grouped now, so I have to, I'm gonna control shift G to ungroup again. There are your boxes. You can design it however you want from this point forward. It took you a half a second to let PowerPoint help you. So you don't have to cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. Does anyone use designer? Under the design tab, you may have noticed it. Sometimes like you're just putting images on stuff and it, this thing pops up with these slides. I turn mine off, but you can always bring it back under the design tab and go to design ideas. You do need to be connected to the internet because it's, it's pulling from the cloud. But look at this. PowerPoint is trying to design the slide for you. Now, whether you think this is a good idea or not, or whether you like the designs options, and you just click it and it turns your content into this. Whether you think this is good or not, you can look at this like smart art as smart start or design or start. It's a place to start. If you don't like these colors or I don't need my numbers, fine. 
ultimately, this is a version of smart art that you can just ungroup. And now you just have boxes. But let's go back to, um, let me go back to a different one here because the other cool thing, I just wanna show you this, chunking. PowerPoint just did it for me. And this is the cool thing, it chose icons. Now it, got, it has the stupid handshake and the, the thing, but look at the last one. It chose a car. How did it choose a car? It looked at my text and it saw create major automotive promotion and it chose an icon from Microsoft's built-in icons. And look, you don't like it, you can go in and you can change the shape to, you know, or change the graphic rather to a file. You can change it to something else. You can also, um, just like I showed before, control shift G, ungroup, and now you just have your little chunks. Do whatever you want with it. Don't blame PowerPoint, you know, design it however you want. 